Hi, it's Steffi from Steffi's Beads and Bobbles, and today I'm playing with buttons. I've been teasing you for a little bit about my salt and pepper shakers, and what I'm doing is I'm making button flowers to go into them. Now, I didn't do any real, I mean, this is a full bouquet, but I didn't really finish it off or decorate it. This is just going to be to show you how to make this type of button flower. I will be doing some other versions as well. But I wanted to show you that you can take and make any kind of flower you want depending on the buttons you have. Now this one here I used twisted wire. Now I decided I liked, I liked the look of the twisted wire. I wanted to give it that little bit of texture but they don't fit into half the shakers. So going forward, I'm just going to twist the top and leave the wire straight. But you have to make sure you use a sturdy wire for this. But these are some of the buttons that I did. This one I used a glass button, a glass one on top here, just some simple buttons. This one's much fatter and taller. And this is a glass button down here, and I've got a metal one on top. This is the only flower-shaped button I have. Now, I would love to do a bouquet all with those but I'm obviously not going to any craft stores even if they were open so I'm just using what I have and if I had a textured button like some of these I use those that one has a flower on top these are more the glass now you can use a shank button but you will see that it does stand up and and if you don't mind that little shank showing it it can be a fun look I'm sorry if I'm a little sniffly. The reason I haven't done a video in a very long time is I've been suffering from severe sinus. Well, I got the bright idea to finally turn on our cool mist humidifier. And boy, in one day, it turned it around. I feel great, but I sound like I have a cold, but I don't. It's just finally me feeling better. Now, here's one. It's got a kind of reticulated open it's a very pearly button. I don't know what it looks like on camera. And I put like a satin um, button behind it and then kind of a flattish, not really pearly, more flat one behind it. This is with the single shank. This one I just twisted it on the top and I did not go down this, the whole thing. And this is another one I did with a smaller, also with a shank, and then I used a thick button with kind of a hollow in it. And I just kind of wanted to show you a variety. And I have this little tiny guy. So I decided I'd make one little tiny one to show you. You can make them in any size. Now these buttons here were all from a jar. And I think I got this jar. I believe I got it at Michael's. And it had... Where's the lid to it? I just dumped it out too. I literally just dumped this bucket out. Um, it had... 500 no that's an address I don't know this whole jar was full of all these really basic whoops basic buttons you know just not all of these but some of the more basic ones real just primary uh, pinks and purples and blues and yellows and then I have these which I'm fairly certain I got from the Dollar Tree so if you don't have buttons or don't have a lot you can source buttons from a lot of different places. Now, I've bought my buttons over the years from yard sales, estate sales. I couldn't even tell you where I got some of these. I think this was a one I bought online, a glass button. This is plastic with a real beautiful glittery look. And then this is layered with one of these cheapy plastic, but they look really pretty when you layer them. So I have a couple here that I started to show you kind of what you can do. And I'll start with this little one here. And I simply took this pink one with kind of a textured top. And then I put a real pearly button underneath and then kind of an off-white with a pinkish tint. And so I put the first one on, on the loop. Then I added the second one going through the... It had the four holes and I went across kitty corner the other holes are hidden and then I did the same on the third one which will look like that when you get it done. Now you can take and twist them by hand or you can twist them with a wire uh, you know with wire pliers chain pliers but I just kind of take them like this 
and bend it like that and then make sure you get to where you can twist it and then I just twist like this it's always a little wobbly I found if I try too hard then you take your wire cutters and cut right there and you have a cute little flower and it will fit in any holder because it's thin so you can take any old and I had to put tape under this one because it didn't have a cork but you can buy corks or plugs I just haven't done it yet now this isn't going to be the finished product this is just showing you how to make the buttons and how I do it now here's another one where I took a teeny tiny little red button it's got a pearl look and then a pretty flowered plastic button they're all plastic I don't know if that's showing up or not and then a real pretty satiny green and again I put the first one through you can see I just do this and then I thread the other two on kind of going kitty corner through the the holes see I don't go next I go across and again just I twist it flat across as tight as I can get it and then I just turn 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 just two or three times now if you want to do the long um, ones like I did over here I just do the same thing all the way down and that will give you here I've got a couple here that'll give you this twisted look if you have something that like this that has really big holes in it and you like that look then you don't have to worry and that's the one my husband just put a cork in for me and these are some bigger ones and I really wanted the heavier that's got a glass button on top and some beautiful vintage pearlescent buttons and here's a few more I made this one I used one of those colorful fun ones you can get oh, at Walmart and places these are some more vintage here's another one that's kind of shaped like a flower it's a shank but it had a fairly shallow it had a flat shank and then I put a green and a white and these are all the first batch I made that had the twisted wire all the way down but for the ones with little tiny holes and for these little delicate flowers I would recommend um, doing that now you could use a green now I have this craft wire but it's too soft you can see that will not support anything so if you buy it has to be kind of a hard wire that's color and I'm not sure how hard the colored wires are now I have one more where's the other one I was going to show you oh did I drop it uh, I thought there was one more I was going to show you that I had strung oh yeah I wanted to show you here that when you string them on if it goes too short then all you have to do is kind of push back pull them off just pull them back off and then this one has the flat shank see where it kind of goes through that flat area and I just pull it right back off whoops I just dropped it hopefully not into the trash can and then I just take my looping I have my looping which are easy to find they're on craft well they're not easy to find but you can find them you just have to look but you can use the double loopers for this too most most stores sell the double loopers where you have two two um, round ends I just happen to like the ones with a flat and a round but they are very hard to find now you take and you put that let me get it on there again got to see where the hole is okay and then I like to get the shank on first real quick um, yeah well you have to anyway and so you get that shank on there and you hang it and then you say okay what was I going to put on with that and to, on this one I wanted to put this really interesting purple it's a matted with a pattern to it so I'm going to put that on and I'm going to go through that hole and then I'm going to go through the one kitty corner to it like that and then I like this really thick, beautiful button. And I'm going to do the same thing. And that's why I had to restring it because this one's so fat that I didn't have enough wire. Now, there you go. Now it's thick enough. I mean, the wire's long enough to take care of that. And again, I'm going to twist it all the way over like that. And then just turn, turn, turn two or three times. Um, I highly recommend you do it by hand because I did try it with the pliers and it ended up um, breaking my wire because it does such a good job and I just had to start over now this one's heavier let's see how it, it stands up with just a single wire it did fine
So I'm going to do some other versions of these. So I'll be back with some other ones with different embellishments and different types. And then I'll do a full bouquet in another video where I show you how to actually put the bouquet together and finish it. But I thought this would give you a chance to go through your buttons and maybe start making some flowers up. And then I'll be back soon um, with a couple more videos, on, or at least one more video, but I'm thinking two, on different ways you can put these bouquets together and what the different things are you can do with these flowers. But they're a lot of fun. There's something that if you have a lot of buttons, and I have a lot of buttons, this is just a small, small amount. I've got a whole bucket over there, big sweater box full of buttons. And you know, most of them I've gotten at yard sales. One was a bug in here. Uh, one was a gallon bag for five bucks. And in that gallon bag, I found some really cool um, jewelry that I ended up selling separately on eBay and making my five bucks back in a little profit. So um, this was another box here that I bought from a yard sale. Now these aren't what was in it. There was a bunch of different things in it. Um, it has a lid over there. And I paid $3 for this box full of buttons. Same yard sale, I think, is the bag. She was my next-door neighbor when she passed. Another thing you can do, I forgot to show you, they sell these gorgeous buttons at Hobby Lobby. So when they're open again, and you can go back in, they have all kinds of beautiful rhinestone buttons. And you go when they're on sale. There's the other one to that. When they're on sale, and I think they're like $5 a set, I wait until they're half price, and then I buy a few. I bought a few of them. And those are really spectacular. You can, you know, I wish I had some uh, of the turquoise. But see, I started doing this before I went out. If I could go out and buy buttons, I'd probably add a few. But right now, I'm just doing with what I have. So that's what I encourage you to do. Go through what you have. Let's use up some of our current craft supplies before we buy more. Because it's always fun to buy more. But it's more of a challenge to use up what you have. And I mean, I have bags and bags of metal and wood and leather and silver and gold and brass tons of buttons so I thought this would be a fun project it's been in my mind for a long time that I wanted to do this for you so here's one that could be even a Christmas one again it's got a flower texture to it and it's just so much fun and when you have these spectacular interesting buttons like the star like the flower like the reticulated one this one those are fun to put as your focal piece now I found some stuff like this, and I'm going to see if I can maybe put one that this on one of the stems. Um, you know, you could wire it on, like put it on like this. You know, put it on like this and then twist it a couple times. I might try something like that. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. But you can make bouquets with old salt and pepper shakers. So if you have your grandma's old salt and pepper shaker, this is one of the ones my husband brought me from California. He paid $4 for it. Vintage gold shaker. He bought just one, and it's so pretty. And I put pretty much a pink theme on this one. But I'm going to show you how you can finish off and decorate it and make it into a finished piece. But I thought this would be a great Mother's Day gift for mom, grandma, even a sister or a friend. And just using the stuff you have. And that's why I'm going to do a couple more videos to show you some other supplies you can use. So I will be back very soon. And I hope everyone's feeling good. It's a relief for me to be feeling better because I had that sinus pressure where you couldn't even think. My face hurt so bad I thought I was going to have to do that teledoc. And then we hooked up the cool mist humidifier. Oh my gosh. In one full day, it totally changed my life. I feel like I feel human for the first time. Oh, here's the lid for the buttons. Crafters Square Notions. I could swear I got this at Michael's when you go in line for their register and they have that little tiered uh, round tiers of stuff. I believe these were in there. Now it's been a few years, but I bet you they still sell stuff like this. And it was packed full. So these are the best way to go. In Dollar Tree, I mean, these are cute buttons. There's nothing wrong with any of these for doing flowers. Get you started, right? So, um, just use what you got. Get it uh, used up. And if you have old shirts that you're never going to wear that are old and torn but have nice buttons, pull them off. Um, that's where some of my buttons have come from, old clothing. Uh, but most of them I've bought at yard sales, thrift stores, uh, uh, estate sales mainly. So, 
And you can look for clothes at a quarter at yard sales and estate sales, and even thrift stores will have their clearance corner. If the fabric on a shirt is cool and you could use it for something, and it's got a lot of maybe this kind of a button on it, these nice little pearlescent buttons like these. Well, I can't get one off the table. But it's got a bunch of these little pearly buttons like this in different colors. Grab that shirt for 50 cents or a dollar. Cut the fabric part out and pull all the buttons off. And for 50 cents or a dollar, and at yard sales, often a quarter to 50 cents, you can get buttons, fabric for small projects. I mean, just all kinds of great craft supplies from old clothes. Zippers sometimes. You can pull out zippers that are still perfectly usable on old clothes. So don't ever give up on looking for craft uh, supplies in odd places because you'd be surprised where you can get some amazing craft supplies. Anyway, well, I'll be back soon with, um, you can even use giant buttons. Look at this. Isn't that ginormous? Um, I think I was going to stack it like this. So you can do a lot of fun stuff with buttons. So we'll do some other button crafts too. But for now, see what you can come up with if you have some craft wire, um, even gardening wire, any kind of wire that's, uh, you know, if it's a rustic wire, that's okay too. It doesn't have to be shiny and pretty. Copper wire, gold wire, brass wire, whatever you got, try it out. I love copper wire. I might even do a few in copper wire. If you have some green gardening wire, the paddle, maybe try that. But see what you can come up with, and I'll be back soon with a video showing you some other buttons you can make, or button flowers you can make, and what you can add to them. And also, we'll do a video very soon on what to do once you get them all together and you have them, how to finish off the bouquet and make it really pretty. So I'll be back soon. Thank you guys so much. Bye.